Aloha and welcome to the Reclaim the Bay Project in New Jersey. This is a, going to discuss designing air-driven water pumps for use on this project. This is prepared by Glenn Martinez of All Monte Gardens. This is the drawing that was provided to us. This shows the tank on top of the dock or the breakwater, total lift of 120 inches. That we call that ground level is where the bottom of the tank is at 84 inches. High tide is at 36 inches. Low water tide is 12 inches deep above the, over the bay floor. So at high tide of 36 inches, less of a lift than at low tide. The scope of this project is for us to design and build a water pump that is powered by compressed air to lift the water from the wild bay uh, up to the combined clam tanks on the docks. The idea here, folks, is to get the nutritious bay water up into the clam tanks to feed the baby clams. The physical challenge? Oh, as we said, the bay has a tide of one to three feet. The dock is six foot above the bay floor. The tank itself is four feet deep sitting on top of the dock. So a reminder, that's a 10 foot high lift at, lo at low tide. It's only about six or seven feet at high tide. Job description, well, you got to deliver the upwell or airlift. You either can do it by a burping pump or we can do it by compression. And we're going to show you both. Okay, so uh, review all measurements are from the bay floor going up. We're going to show you how the timings work. As we say here, your video shows that five gallons in 21 seconds. You know, as Rick pointed out, that 15 gallons a minute times that time a liter. And he does the math out. The bottom lines is, as Rick says, if we wanted to service 50 liters of clams, we would need 190 liters of water per minute. Okay? So if 56 liters of clams is optimum, then we can use three air lifts, that or a larger one, higher capacity. One of the principal designs is to go solar. It should lend itself to being solar power. This mandates being low power usage, no surges, that's startup surges, a nice even draw, in other words, not a fluctuation up and down, and a good power factor. One of the other design goals is low, low maintenance. Keep it simple, silly. So with low maintenance, one of the principal things is to have few moving parts. So you're hearing the sound of the water coming in. It's flooding from the red. We're pumping now. We'll see. Now we're going to come to our next fill. Now that's the venting. That's the air venting out of there. Pass this solenoid. The solenoid lets it vent. We got zero pressure. This is a 120 watt, uh, 120 liter. Uh, hear the pressure going up. Now we're going up four pounds, five pounds. If five pounds of pressure, voila. Go ahead, John. Let's go. And I'm timing here on my watch. We started at 20 seconds up. See if you can get through to, you need a whole five gallon? Oops, didn't do it. So this system is running a 120 watt pump, air pump, air compressor on the lift mechanism. And you see we're over running it. See how it's totally full there? The water is not getting out as fast as we're pumping it up, if you see it there. So that's the water coming down here to the reservoir. From the reservoir, goes to the far end, comes up there. At that point down there, we have a 120 watt pump pumping it into there, 120 liters a minute, and it pumps it down here. And here you see is the turbo blaster. With the turbo blaster, the water's coming up the center, and then we add air around it, and then we get sopping wet. Uh -huh. This is the start of the pressure build up. And as it builds up, it went to four and a half, it goes down to three, at three PSI, now, I get water shooting up and over. And we'll do a timed result on this one now. 29 seconds, or 25 seconds is the time to beat. We'll see if air and water makes the big difference. And you can see up there, it, uh, we, we got a full head of water there in that water separator. Uh, if you can see that from here, 
I'll zoom in there a bit. You'll see that is chock full there. How's that? That's a full head of water, super aerated. Whoop, there you go, in the line. So when you think about maintenance, we want to avoid daily maintenance requirements. We don't want to have to change filters every day. We want maybe a weekly or a monthly plan, and that's about it. We also want serviceability. We want to be able to use common tools to be able to do this. No specialty items required. If you would just flip that thing, John. Okay. So this is what we're coming up to. We're four PSI. We lowered it one PSI. Okay, one PSI. And we almost double our time. So what we have to do is have a pump that can do five PSI. You do great. But uh, you get the super aerated water here. Coming up here. As you see in there. Coming up big time. Okay? You're doing overflow. Coming down to below. All right? So uh, anyway, 4 PSI, we'll have to call the manufacturer. That's twice what the pump is rated for. Go ahead, turn on. Come on. Save the key. Okay. So here we're going to do a test. Set. Go. So we're at 15 seconds after is our test run. And the second end there, we can see that just fine. Your 10 seconds. You're 15 seconds. Hey, here you go. You're, about, you're 15, that's 16, 17. The bottom line we found using the most efficient was a 120 watt Hako silent air compressor. That's only one amp at 120 volt. So dig a hole four feet deep or deeper and install a six inch pipe with a cap on the bottom. That's your wet well and then have it come up about two inches above the bay floor. We're going to show you diagrams how to put a uh, rock casement around it to protect it from debris getting in. Uh, drop in a pipe and a pipe pump. We would used on most of our tests, we used a two inch pipe with either one inch or an inch and a quarter inside. Slap on the pump and away you go. The advantage of the pipe and a pipe pump, no moving parts. Anything that fits into the two inch pipe gets pumped up. We've never had a clogged one yet. The standard PVC pipe and standard feedings. Everything is off the shelf. You can be pulled out by hand. You can check, use it, you know, to check it. You don't need any tools. Uh, you can be washed and returned and put dropped right back in the six inch well casing. We just tie ours up with a bungee cord. Being on the ocean, you might want something a little bit stouter than a bungee cord. Well casings can be cleaned via hose or a water vacuum. At low tide, you can simply stick a water vacuum and suck the water out in about two passes, get down the bottom and get any mud out that you might have gotten in. Second choice, dig two holes. Bury two 55-gallon plastic drums. Place sacks of quick read over them to secure them in place. Plumb it with a garden hose. We buy high-quality no-kink garden hose and operate as a simple displacement pump. It, when you have to pause to you pump out the 55 gallon drum, you have a few, about a minute or two for it to fill back up. If you don't want to lose that capacity, then simply have two drums. You only have one air compressor, but you have two drums for near continuous pumping. Use only one drum if a two minute pause to refill is acceptable. With two drums, one pumps while the other fills. This is a way of having two pumps hooked up simultaneously to one clam tank. And by doing this, you have almost continuous flow. Leader in is a leader out. You can run the solenoids of 12, 24, or 120 volt solenoids. That turns the air on and vents it out. It's two barrels buried deep beneath the tide water in the bay. They must be anchored or they will pop up. If you do not want to use a 55 gallon drum or other big container, you can use lengths of pipes. Three, four, five, six, eight, ten inch long. Put them on the ground level or below. It's very simple. Water comes in one end. And then you're going to have a vents, a mechanical valve there that will let the 
uh, air vent out to let the water come in. Controlled by one solenoid up at the top. These are very trouble free, very good pumps. This is our pipe compression pump. This is a horizontal pipe laid on the ground. It could be connected to the fish tank, or the ocean could be the fish tank, and the water would flow in the check valve at the right hand end. Note that underwater, the horizontal pump must be secured. It will float up when it's empty. There's a little air compressor. It can be mounted anywhere. You have two air releases. These are our weighted check valves, and these will open up on the pressure release on the burp. And then it will reload, close up, and go again. This is extremely efficient. Third choice is run two of the four inch pipes, just like you saw in that drawing, but you do them two of them side by side, very similar to the two fifty five gallon drums. Okay? And each one foot of a four inch pipe is just a little less than a gallon of water. So uh, 10 foot piece of 4 inch pipe hauls a little less than 10 gallons. We've made runs of 50 foot long and uh, you pump it out. It's the same thing as doing a 55 gallon drum. So it all depends on your circumstances. The advantages, you don't have to dig a big hole in the bay. You only dig a little trench, cover it up, set cr quick creed on it, flush with the deck and you'll be fine. Um, you still got to secure them because when they're empty, that pipe is going to float up to the top. So every gallon can lift weight pounds. So if you think about it, a 10 foot piece of four inch PVC pipe has about 80 pounds of uh, flotation to it, okay? This is a way of having two pumps hooked up simultaneously to one clam tank. And by doing this, you have almost continuous flow. Leader in is a leader out. You can run the solenoids of 12, 24, or 120 volt solenoids. That turns the air on and vents it out. It's two barrels buried deep un beneath the tide water in the bay. They must be anchored or they will pop up. If a person has two pumps they want to run at a time, they use two containers and they can switch with solenoids in between them. And so that really gives you a tremendous advantage for control. You have a bridge valve that lets high pressure from one side go to the other at moments before switching from one tank to the other. That way you get an almost continuous pump out. Yeah, so this shows those connections, how you would do them up using three solenoids. Drawings, we've already forwarded a copy of our original patent pending application. That's 75 pages, 35 pages of text and 35 pages of drawings, covering six different pumps showing the details. And those are CAD drawings showing you just the total breakout and what the parts are and the size. Uh, we've also just completed a pipe and a pipe CAD drawings, and uh, we've given you a copy of that. So feel free to give us a call if we can be of any additional service. We look forward to helping you guys. This is a test tower of the two drums uh, with 55 gallon drums. We did the pipes one laying down earlier you saw with the tester up on the ladder. Then we used two 55 gallon drums. One would pump down while the other one filled up. And then when we switched over and you see the valve being up there at the top on the right hand side there, we did mechanical valves and then we replaced them with solenoids. We were able to get the 12 volt solenoids for under $15 a piece. So very affordable. Uh, for this system. Solenoids anywhere from $15 to $30. Rubber use seals, we can drill in the tank, pop these things in. They take tremendous amount of pressure. Keep in mind we're not dealing with anything over about 6 PSI here. So uh, these do just great. Uh, no fittings on the inside. You drill a 3 inch hole, put a 2 inch fitting, put the 2 inch pipe through it and it wedges out. We've had no problems with them. This is our favorite brand. This is Metella, is what they in America is called by, called Hakko anywhere else, H A K K O. Uh, but they're very good quality pumps. We've had excellent service out of them. So that's your nameplate if you want to take a look at it. You can get those from um, uh, Pentair at Aquatic Ecosystem. They're really good things. 
So you see that's the one on the left is 120 volt AC. The one on the right is a 12 volt DC. They're interchangeable. It's just the voltage that you want to work with. If I'm around salt water in that, I want to work with 12 or 24 volt. I would stay away from the 120. If you're going to be solar powered, just go with 12 volt DC and keep life simple. Conclusion. Well, we've sent you the PFD files of all the, uh, of the applications, so in great detail. Um, we've sent you just about everything we think you need to be able to do it. Um, one thing to keep in mind, when you do the compression pump, it's a liter of air in and a liter of water out. You have no slippage, no loss. But you do take in a few moving parts. This will give you an idea of what we're doing here. This over here, Natalie, if you want to take a look over there on the side. So you're 24 feet down is a stream. 24 feet down, we're pumping it up using 120 watt air compressor. And we have a little 40 watt water pump at the bottom, lifting the water the first six feet. And after that, the air takes over. So that's what we do here, folks. We make water come up the hill with air. So we're super aerated here. Coming in here good, and then this gravity feeds over to our koi fish pond. Anyway, thought you'd enjoy seeing that. Here we go. There's our chamber, and there's our pump. This is a very easy to build system using the pipe and the pipe pump. It's a simple well pump system using the burper airlift. It's protected by a jacket of rocks, you know, as a pre-filter if it's needed. You can live 100 to 200 percent higher than the depth of the well that you're pumping from. Videos. Natalie shot some videos of these full length ones. I've just taken out some little clips. I want to ask her to stick them up on YouTube for you guys so y'all can we'll send you the links. And those of you who want to watch the full of it or the whole process, you can. Give me a call if you got any questions. The number is 808 237 0842. We have that in print and it's on top of all our emails also. I'm ready to come out and build one of these whenever you want to and install it if you need the help. Well, thank you for watching. We hope this has added something to the game. We're just learning a new software to make better presentations. I hope you found it entertaining and educational. We hope that between this and the manuals we sent you that you'll be able to create a solution for your clams there. Aloha, Glenn Martinez, Natalie Cash, and the crew of Olamana Gardens. We wish you all well. <laughs>